Hey everybody, Tim here with today's episode of Discovery, Season 2, Episode 10, The Red Angel. So overall, it's an interesting episode. This is kind of the setup for the final arc of the series. I mean, we got less than five episodes left. I can't even believe that. Um, a lot of this was more awkward than anything, but it was just like that those final revealing moments. Like we finally see like the who the villain really is and some stuff like that. From the very beginning with Arium's funeral is really sad. Um, we find out that the Red Angel is Michael, which it's not. So, I mean, that's that whole big twist was a little pointless. But at least they revealed it by the end of the same episode. So, it was a nice little setup. Uh, Leland reveals that the suit is Federation made. And, like, he was totally involved with Michael's, like, parents and stuff like that. So, interesting I don't know what's going on with the whole conversation with Giorgio and just like the whole thing where she's like hitting on Stamets and like Culper comes in and he's like, you know, he's gay. And she's like, not where I come from. He's pansexual. And we did all sorts of stuff. And she even calls him Poppy. And he's like, she just call me Poppy. Um, and just, I love like Tilly is the relatable person at this. Cause as soon as Giorgio walks out and Tilly's just like, what just happened? Like, I'm like, I'm with you. Like, I, I don't even know what's going on with this show anymore. Um, Leland talks about, like, the time crystal, and that's what is able to power the, the Red Angel suit. So it's like, what, a time crystal? Okay, whatever. Anyways, uh, Giorgio, like, whole conversation with Michael about, like, I couldn't tell you that Leland was basically responsible for your parents death because it's not my story but i can make sure the story gets told and i've talked about how like i don't like Giorgio, and i know other people have commented like i like Giorgio. i don't know just something about her because she's so over the top but as of like this episode i feel like they've softened her significantly like even actually to take that back a little bit even in like the last episode or two episodes ago where i talked about where she like is fighting with michael and she even shoots michael and michael's like and she's like, what do you want me to do? Um, so, like, they, I feel like Giorgio is slowly getting more and more softer. Like, I don't know, maybe being in our universe is taking its toll, something like that. I don't know. And I don't know if anybody else has picked up that she has never had an aversion to light like Lorca did. That's weird. Even though she flinched in season one, never been brought up again. You know why it's never been brought up again? Because it was a dumb thing to even create. Yeah, sorry, not sorry. Anyway, um, they their whole story, the whole big plot twist is, well, if this is Michael from the future, then the way we lure it in is by killing the Michael of the present. Because if we kill the pre Michael of the present, then the Michael of the future won't survive. So it'll have to come to save her, and then we can capture it. Oddly, I get that. That makes sense. I follow you. So they try to kill Michael and it doesn't seem to work, but then suddenly the Red Angel appears and they capture it and it turns out that it's Michael's mom. Big shock, everybody's surprised, in credits. It's like, why is this a thing? Like, they've talked about how her mom died several times now and she even heard her mom's death. So, I don't know, I'm with everybody else. Like, how is this possible? So, I don't know. It just seems so over the top. And realistically, like, she could have let Michael just die. Especially if she has, like, time travel capabilities. She would know that they're going to revive her or something. I don't know. It just seemed over the top. I absolutely hate this episode in one aspect. So, I pretty much can watch anything. Like, I do not have a sensitive stomach. Whatever. I love horror movies. I watch horror movies all the time. Uh, I guess, like, the term is torture porn. But, like, like the Saw movies or even, like, the Human Centipede, nothing turns my stomach. I just watch it, eat my M&Ms, no big deal. The one other thing, I think I mentioned this in something else. I don't even remember why. But I know there was another review that this came up in. The one thing that I absolutely cannot handle, and I'm my eyes are watering talking about it, I don't like anything to do with the eyeballs. I'm supposed to wear glasses, and I don't, because they're too close to my face. Contacts, never gonna happen. The thought of touching my eyeball, never gonna happen. I don't like it. Anytime in a horror movie, if they go for the eyes, I'm done. I can't handle it. 
So the scene where Leland's trying to talk to Control and the metal shard, the metal needle goes into his eyeball. Actually, you know what? I think that's what it was. I think I brought this up in my first contact review where you see the, the needle touch, where you see it touch uh, Jean-Luc's eyeball. But where the needle like pokes Leland in the face, I lost my shit. Like, it hurts to talk about it. My eyes are watering. I don't know if you guys can see this. So, I don't know. Eyeballs are a big thing for me, and I was grossed out, and I couldn't watch it. So, there may have been, like, a really important thing that happened right after that scene. I wasn't watching. I was done. I tuned it out. So, I don't know. Like, that whole scene was really unnecessary for me, but that was me. That's my own little trigger. So, I don't know. For this one, what do you guys think about it? What do you think about, like, the big reveal at the end? Go ahead, let me know, and I will see you guys next time for Perpetual Infinity.